According to the recent UCAS data provided by HESA, between 2017 and 2018, 39% of students studying physical sciences were female. In the same period, the percentage of female students studying mathematical sciences was just 37%, and only 5% of audio engineers in the UK are women. And this shortage of women spans to other areas of acoustics. To tell us more about the opportunities for women in acoustics is Professor Bridget Shield, recently awarded an NBE. Hello. What do you believe prevents more women from pursuing a career in acoustics? When I started working in acoustics, which was in the early 1970s, there were very, very few women indeed. And I'd often go to a conference or a meeting and find I was the only woman there. Um, and that, that could be quite intimidating, quite daunting. It, it's, it's been encouraging over the years to see a gradual increase in the number of women. And I believe now the number of women, um, the percentage of sort of full members of the Institute who are women is roughly 12%, which is compared quite favorably with some of the other um, engineering professions. But obviously it's still not nearly enough. Well, as I say, I think it's the general sort of um, shortage of women going into engineering and taking the the relevant um, subjects, you know, A-levels, uh, for them to enter into um, an engineering degree um, or an acoustics degree. Um, I, think, I think there is a problem in the acoustics industry with women who um, start off in acoustics, talking to um, the younger women, I think it is difficult for them, particularly those with young families. And, and in fact, this isn't just true of women, it's true of anybody with, um, with young families, with parenting role or any caring role. Um, something that's very difficult is um, combining that with the sort of hours required in um, acoustic and consultancy in particular. I suspect another problem is child care. Um, when I went back to work um, after having my children, we relied on au pairs. I mean, I, um, uh, child minds and au pairs, and I'm sort of lucky in that we could accommodate an au pair, but I mean, that doesn't happen these days. Um, so I think on the whole, th those sort of practical aspects are much more difficult and much more expensive as well than they were in my day. Um, there's also a problem, I think, with women returning to acoustics after having had a break for any reason. Um, I mean, I found it. I had 10 years, not in acoustics, I did sort of other part-time jobs and things, um, when I, after I'd had my children, um, before I went back to acoustics. And everything had changed. Instrumentation had changed, terminology had changed, the units that noise was measured in had changed. And I find it very, very difficult to catch up. And I suspect now, possibly, the change is even happening even faster. So um, I think there's a need to make it easier for women to start a career in acoustics and then know that they can pick it up again if they have a break for any reason. I think acoustics in general is, is very hidden. People aren't aware of it. Uh, they're certainly not aware of it as a subject that you could actually study at university. Um, so I think, I think there's a need to sort of promote acoustics, raise awareness of acoustics um, as in, in general. Um, but I think one of the things that might make it more attractive and, and more attractive to women in particular is possibly highlighting the links with other subjects. So you've got links with psychology, the effects of noise on people and how people react to sounds of different kinds, um, which was really, really interesting, really enjoyable and rewarding work. And the results of that sort of fed into the um, building regulations on the acoustic design of schools. So it's actually had an impact on um, in the real world, which is uh, very gratifying. 